यस वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग मोहन जीत वेलकम टू द क्लास गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग कैन यू लिसन टू मी एम आई ऑडिबल टू यू एम आई विजिबल ऑल्सो ओके आई गेस आई है द मीटिंग आई डी इन द व्हाट्सएप एज वेल एज आई है द मीटिंग आई डी इन द गूगल क्लास रूम आई गेस योर फ्रेंड्स विल बी जॉइनिंग बाई दिस टाइम आई विल बी रिवाइसिंग द पोएम अ फोटोग्राफ ओके आई विल बी रिवाइसिंग दैट पोएम रिटर्न बाई शाले टॉल्सन so hereby i am sharing the screen i hope the screen will be visible to you shortly so please stay online let me allow the others yes uh, good morning shomodeep welcome to the class good morning sir good morning good morning i have given the meeting id both in the google classroom as well as in the class whatsapp group okay and uh, i will be discussing uh, the poem as i told you all a photograph i will be discussing that one so hereby i am sharing the screen and i am sharing the material that i will be discussing so uh, first of all boys please confirm me whether uh, this particular uh, material is visible can you all see it is it visible to all of you yes sir okay yes sir okay, okay. thank you thank you so let us move on then at first some important points i will be highlighting because this is a revision class so i will be trying to provide you all the important details within a short frame of time and as i told you i am repeating myself once again please carry a copy and a pen by your side because whenever you feel like any point i am discussing is very important for you you can obviously jot it down okay so let us come to the intro related with this poem you all know this poem it will be a revision class so i want feedback from you all also and uh, in course of my lecture i might ask questions and i want you all to answer me okay wait i guess there are some many students to hello yes uh, i think orgo joined us right now yes orgo a very good morning welcome to the class good morning sir good morning good morning so yes so now i am moving on with the introduction related to the poem see the title of the poem is very much appropriate yes because see the entire poem revolves around a photograph okay so from that perspective if you analyze the poem if you critically interpret the poem then you will find that the title is very much apt or we can say the title is very much appropriate why because it reminds the poet of her mother okay every time whenever the poet she used to see the photograph she is reminded of her dear departed mother okay uh, and i as as you all know every picture tells a story right so a photograph is actually a journey down the memory lane it's a nostalgia or rather to say it's a journey down the memory lane a photograph is that captures a certain moment of someone's life normally as i told you it's a journey down the memory lane it captures certain moment in the life of someone a person might change in due course of time but the memories attached with the photograph are eternal this is something very philosophical but at the same time this is something very realistic also because i do feel like uh, i mean we change with the passage of time because change is the law of nature i guess you all know about it but the memories attached with the photograph they are forever eternal forever permanent okay and in this poem we should know that the poet's mother is no more and remember she died how many years passed by dear students she died yes can any one of you answer me uh, orgo mohanji ta or somodip how many years passed by that she died very important right thank you well yes yes very good very good absolutely right you are excellent answer she died 12 years passed by so remember that 12 years that particular 12 years it swings like a pendulum throughout the entire poem and we know that the poet's mother is no more but what is still alive the memories are alive and ultimately what the memories are giving to the poet the memories are not providing the poet any sort of happiness but the memories are providing to the poet pain and grief i repeat one more time 
the memories are providing to the poet pain and grief and every time uh, when the poet takes out the photograph it seems that the dead memories comes alive once again okay the memories that are uh, within the uh, I mean that were deep inside okay inside the photograph whenever she used to take out that particular photograph where her mother was seen smiling along with her two girl cousins Betty and Dolly whenever she used to take out that photograph the poet okay the memories come alive it happens when you take out an old album your family album when you scrounge your childhood photographs okay or photos the memories will come alive okay the mother's sweet face and her cousins have changed with time but the moment captured in the photograph still gives happiness to the poet's mother when she views it 30 or 40 years later remember one thing her mother also deeply used to cherish this photograph when this photograph was shown to her uh, during those days when she was alive okay at that time she uh, this photograph used to give her plenty of enjoyment okay and uh, when 30 or 40 years later she used to see it she used to feel very very happy and obviously she used to recapture that moment when she along with her family members they all went for a summer holiday they all went to the sea beach to enjoy okay and at that time only one of the relative okay had clicked the photo uncle has been referred here so one of the relative had clicked the photo and it was a very memorable one and uh, the poet's mother when she used to be alive and at that time when the poet used to uh, bring out that photo in front of her she used to recapitulate she used to recollect those uh, bygone days of happiness and pleasure okay every time when the poet used to take out that photograph and after the death of the poet's mother it seems that not only the poet misses her mother but most importantly my dear students uh, she misses the smile of her mother the laughter of her mother more than anything else okay see and uh, the death of her mother had created a vacuum and the death of her mother had created a voidness all around okay see the poet reminiscences that the sea holiday was the past of her mother and for her the laughter of her mother is past now obviously when her mother used to see the photograph she used to remember the sea holiday the holiday that she enjoyed a lot with her two girl cousins but now she can't revive that in reality obviously she can traverse obviously she can have a journey down the memory lane and she can revive that past memory similarly her mother is no more right at the present moment but uh, uh, it is the laughter of her mother that uh, uh, she used to cherish a lot but now in her absence it seems that uh, her mother won't be back from uh, her graveyard and neither she can hear the laughter of her mother okay it is not possible also to hear the laughter of her mother because both the things are now past both the moments of life have become permanently etched in the poet's mind with the feeling of eternal loss ultimately see photograph gives us happiness but at the same time when we lose someone very close to us and after that when whenever we see his or her photograph obviously it never gives us pleasure it never gives us happiness what it gives us it gives us sadness it makes us uh, feel pain and we are grief stricken it is something related with eternal loss it is something related with emptiness it is something dear students related with voidness and we find exactly those emotions okay in the uh, case of the poet because now she is all alone and she is missing her mother but more than her mother she is missing the laughter of her mother and she knows at the back of her mind that uh, those laughter okay her mother okay those things won't be revived back she won't come back again okay i guess there is someone on the line let me allow yes i think oishik joined us right now oishik a very good morning welcome to the live class okay let us move on yes now see uh, we find death death has been mentioned in this poem and death is very symbolical here in this poem uh, it has the power 
okay it and it has overpowered also the innocence of these moments and the pleasure they treasured the poet concludes the poem on a melancholy note remember the poem never ends uh, on a happy note okay we we have read the poem we know it very well that the poet never ends on a happy note okay see the poem a uh, poet concludes the poem on a melancholy note with the comment that there is nothing to say or comment upon this sad event because now it silent silences i guess you all remember that particular line it silent silences and remember dear students the word silence has been personified okay now there is nothing that the poet want to comment on this because ultimately there is nothing left for her to comment because the tragic demise of her mother had created a voidness had created an emptiness all around and now more than uh, on other occasion now she is missing her mother a lot particularly the smile of her mother okay i guess shayandeep joined us right now a very good morning shayandeep welcome to the class okay so yes good morning so let us move on right now uh, so see uh now i am moving on to the uh, point wise uh, analysis of the summary okay dear students uh if anyone's microphone is on please off it and please let me know uh after this is is it clear to all of you uh after this is there any doubt you have at the back of your mind you can ask me any doubt up to this or is it clear to all of you is it clear to all of you mohanjit uh shayandeep it is clear to all of you have you all understood up to this A any doubt any doubt okay fine okay okay fine so let us move on then now let us come to the summary of the poem here also i try to discuss the summary point wise okay so that you can understand the value points the value points are very very important okay so i guess up to this there is no problem Uh, and i guess up to this you all have understood now let us come to the value points first of all uh, what is the point number 1 if we read it point wise then obviously uh, it will be far more engaging okay i repeat one more time if you read point wise it will be enjoyable dear students and uh, it will be far more engaging to all of you so first first point is that the poet looks at the cardboard because the photograph was pasted on the cardboard and it was uh, actually uh, taken and prepared during the pre digital era i repeat i have repeated previously also i guess uh, you all know about it that it was uh, clicked and it was been uh, attached fixed during the pre digital era so it was on a cardboard but uh, having said that it evokes many memories related with the childhood phase of the poet's mother okay we know about it 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 brought back many happy experiences for the poet's mother when 30 or 40 years later when she used to see the photograph so see this line the poet looks at the cardboard on which there is a childhood photograph of her mother and what was the age of the mother in the photograph can any one of you say what was the age of the mother yes what was the age of the mother as been depicted in the photograph yes dear students the 12 yes very good it's 12 years and obviously she had died 12 years passed by so remember one thing this 12 years it is very very important because throughout the entire poem uh, we find the significance of this 12 years yes a very good answer correct answer in the photograph she was the eldest one okay she was the eldest one and she was of 12 years old and she was holding the hand of her two cousins betty and dolly now holding the hand uh, signifies a sense of security on one hand a sense of love and affection on the other hand okay so let us move on to the second point she had gone for a sea holiday with her two cousins betty and dolly obviously she had went for a sea holiday she went for a sea holiday with her two cousins betty and dolly while they were paddling the uncle with the camera took a photograph of them and the photograph was very lively i like to repeat once again the photograph was indeed very lively and uh, it actually shows the happiness 
that the three girls they were having at that time they were having a gala time we say no you were having a gala time that means they were having uh, they were actually having uh, one of the most enjoyable moment at that time and they were enjoying they were enjoying a lot both the cousins were holding the hands of our mother who was the eldest among the girls remember there is a term written in your ncert text she the big girl now big girl means that she was the eldest among the girls she was of 12 years uh, probably betty and dolly were not 12 years they were less than that obviously that is the reason she was been termed that she was the eldest among the girls okay point number 5 this was before the poet was born the poet uh, was oh, was not born at that time this was before she was born time fled past since and all those who are in the photograph underwent changes while the sea remained the same the world of nature and obviously the world of the human beings what are the things we find okay if we compare and contrast between the world of nature and the world of the human beings what are the things that are noticeable in the world of nature change happens but not in such a drastic manner but in the world of the human being change happens in a very drastic manner and uh, i mean the people in the photograph they had changed now with the passage of time okay and they have grown old and obviously the poet's mother we know she is no more yes i guess aditya joined us right now aditya good morning welcome to the class good morning sir yes good morning so i am discussing rather to say i am revising the poem uh, a photograph written by charlotte olson okay now her mother would look at the photograph after about 20 to 30 years and laugh nostalgically remember when the poet's mother was alive she used to look at the photograph and she used to laugh nostalgically and after her death the poet misses the laughter of her mother but the poet knew at the back of her mind it is not possible uh, for her uh, to bring back her mother from the world of death because she is no more and she died 20 i mean 12 years had passed by so and remember that was exactly the age of the poet's mother has been depicted in the photograph and that is the reason i told you all dear students this 12 years it plays a very very important role it plays a very significant role now let us move on uh, to point number 8 see now for the poet her mother's laughter and heart sea holiday is a thing of the past obviously the poet whenever she is uh, taking out that photograph she can recollect her mother used to say many things many anecdotes related to that particular sea holiday now and she used to laugh also at the same time enjoy a lot whenever this cardboard framed photograph was brought in front of her but now unfortunately her mother is no more and most importantly uh, her laughter is also no more now not only her laughter but even that cherishable sea holiday that she used to relish a lot she used to in, i mean she used to think about and whenever she used to think about it she used to enjoy a lot now all these two things combined are now a thing of the past okay that obviously it is not possible for the poet to bring back those things back to life neither it is possible for the poet to bring her mother from the world of death nor it is possible for her to relish the laughter of her mother because her mother is no more so obviously uh, there is no question of uh, i mean relishing or enjoying her laughter okay so obviously the death of her mother had created a vacuum all around okay now i am moving on to the next point i told you that the 12 years this particular time frame is very very important okay see her mother died about 12 years ago the silence of her mother's death silences the poet obviously uh, the word silence has been personified here silence silences it's an alliteration also okay because now her world is silence okay there is vacuum voidness everywhere ultimately when now after the death of her mother when the uh, poet she takes out the cardboard framed photograph obviously now the photograph is not providing her happiness 
or solace or pleasure in her mind what the photograph is now projecting to her it is now actually uh, making her grief stricken she is sad obviously she is missing her mother a lot and most importantly and most precisely she is missing the laughter of her mother okay that is something very important okay N and number 11 point she experiences great loss obviously because it is something that is very hard to describe losing parents is very hard to describe it is very difficult to put in words now what loss she is experiencing she can better understand it and obviously that tragedy that grief that voidness of losing someone very close to one's heart it is very difficult to pen down that thoughts in the form of a poetry or a prose but the poet had tried her level best to do that but at the end of the day remember one thing as i repeated earlier in the intro part also the poet uh, i mean the, is experiencing grief and obviously uh, she is feeling very low okay obviously because her mother is no more and remember the poet uh, the poem rather the poem ends on a very negative note okay or rather to say it ends in uh, i mean in a very tragic note okay it, it never ends in happiness because we find at the very end that after the demise of her dear mother her world is now uh, totally uh, f uh, covered with sadness with tragedy with loss okay now she is feeling great loss deep inside and obviously she can't bring back her mother so obviously her mother remains a memory and obviously the childhood of her mother remains a memory as projected in that photograph that was been framed in that cardboard okay so 11 points i had discussed these 11 points are related with the synopsis or summary of the poem is there any doubt up to this dear students any sort of confusion you have you can ask me any doubt anyone any confusion shall i move on to the vocabulary segment okay fine yes sir okay okay fine so i'm moving on to the vocabulary segment some important points are there some important word meanings are there first of all cardboard i told you that it was clicked during the pre-digital era now we don't paste the photograph in the cardboard we make album that's for sure but it's now much more innovative okay now preserving pictures or photographs nowadays in the 21st century it is much more innovative but at that time since as i repeated earlier it was clicked during the pre-digital era so at that time it was been pasted on a cardboard okay that's something very important for us to note now there is a term paddling paddling means walking bare feet in shallow water that is the meaning of the term paddling transient means lasting for a short time snapshot it means photograph terribly means extremely bad labored means needing a lot of effort rai rai here has been used in a very ironical way okay it means disappointment that is the meaning of the term rai okay w r y here in this context of the poem here it is very much suggestive of disappointment okay now let us move on to the explanation part let me explain the first four lines then i will be moving on to the next uh, f uh, i mean next lines okay so let us move on to the first four lines and let's see what is written though i had discussed it but it's a revision class so if you have any doubt anywhere dear students you please clarify okay because for mcq type questions each and every line of the poem is very important and not only that you have to know what is the significance of each and every important lines being literature students you have to read in between the lines okay so let us move on see what is written the cardboard shows me how it was when the two girl cousins okay the when the two girl cousins that means betty and dolly and their name has been mentioned later but at the very beginning we don't find their names are being mentioned but obviously we get an information that it is a sea holiday so see this line the cardboard shows me how it was when the two girl cousins went paddling 
and i guess the meaning of paddling is already been told to you walking bare feet in shallow water okay now each one holding one of my mother's hands obviously she is the big girl she is the eldest one and obviously by holding uh, the hands of the two cousins there is a sense of security and there is love and affection all these things are been suggested okay so each one that means there are two cousins so each one was holding one of my mother's hands and she the big girl some 12 years or so we get to know about us i mean uh, that uh, there is a i mean a holiday session is going on and they are enjoying they went to the sea beach and each one of them was holding the hands of the poet's mother and she the big girl means she was the eldest one out of the two, uh, out, out of the other two girls she was the eldest one or rather to say out of the three girls including her she is the eldest one and her age it was 12 years or so so what information we can get uh, this is the first thing that comes to the mind after looking at that particular photo album see the poet describes looking through a photo album obviously this photo is very memorable it is very special remember dear students this photo is not only memorable this photo is very special to the poet as well as the poet's mother okay the pages of which seems to be made of cardboard as i told you it was during the pre digital era see it is written pre digital photography era so that is the reason it was pasted in the cardboard remember this concept is important for your mcq i repeat one more time this concept is very important for your mcq because normally we don't preserve photos like this it is it has been digitalized nowadays and obviously there are improvements in the world of science and technology now we are talking about a time when photograph was actually been pasted in cardboard or in hard paper okay because uh, this is the, the uh, it was during the pre digital era and this is the way that in the pre digital era the memories are actually stored up okay so let us move on see the cardboard here refers to the thick stiff paper uh, that is a bit hard paper used in the pre digital photography era to store memories i uh, underline this i highlight this of course you all can see that it was been uh, stored in the stiff photo paper that is used in the pre digital era obviously to do what obviously to store memories she is looking at one picture in part particular now there are several pictures but it seems that uh, she is looking at one particular picture that her mother used to cherish and relish when she used to be alive and what is that picture that picture is that particular uh, summer holiday and uh, her mother and her mother's two cousins betty and dolly they were enjoying they were all enjoying uh, near the sea beach okay so see this uh, she is looking at one picture in particular it is a picture of three girls the tallest and the eldest one in the middle is of course the poet's mother and she is holding the hands of her younger cousins that is betty and dolly see and two younger and shorter ones at each side of her and they are who they are betty and dolly and we know that the girl standing in the middle as i referred right now to all of you is actually the poet's mother remember it and the poet speculates that her mother must have been 12 years old when the picture was taken now the i mean the, the poet is not uh, 100% sure but she went on speculating she went on guessing that maybe she was the big girl she was the eldest one and probably by looking at her picture it can be suggested that she was 12 years old at that time the other two girls are two of our cousins and their name as you know betty and dolly though in the first four lines of the poem it has not been mentioned later we get to know about it isn't it okay see each of the cousins is holding on to one of the elder girl's hands for support as i told you sense of affection and obviously the holding of the hands it also signifies uh, support also the picture was taken on a day when the three girls had gone paddling at the beach remember the picture was taken when three of them were enjoying themselves at the sea beach and it was clicked by one of the uncle one of their relatives okay now any doubt with the first four lines dear students any sort of confusion any doubt any sort of uh, questions you want to ask me related with the first four lines okay fine so i am moving on 
uh, to the next four lines line number five to nine see all three stood still to smile through their hair at the uncle with the camera a sweet face my mother's that was before i was born every important information was been given and uncle clicked the photo and her mother was looking very cute and very sweet every one of them all the three girls were looking very beautiful and this photograph was taken before the poet was born and the sea which appears to have changed less washed their terribly transient feet remember hardly there is any change visible in the world of nature but in contrast to that in the life of the human beings there are some drastic changes so what we can gather see in these lines the poet further describes the condition in which the photograph of her mother and her mother's cousins were taken remember it was been clicked by one of the uncle the poet says that the uncle with the camera had been the one to take the photograph because it is uh, written very clearly at the uncle with the camera so one of the relative one of the uncle had clicked the photo it was a very memorable photo and that was the reason when the poet's mother when she was alive she used to relish and cherish uh, that bygone days she used to travel down the memory lane every time when she used to see that particular photograph okay the poet says that the uncle with the camera had been the one to take the photograph he had asked the three girls to pose for him and so they had okay they had left their wet hair open and their hair was obscuring part of their faces part of their faces was visible and part of their faces was obscured with the because of the hair that was blowing uh, near the sea beach it was a very majestic photo and each of the girls was looking beautiful in that picture okay through the flame of hair covering their mouths one could see that they were smiling at the camera but though their hair has obscured part of their face but one thing is visible that they are all smiling they are posing at the camera they are all looking at the camera and of course they are smiling they are having a great time a, ga a gala moment they are having a great occasion however one face in the picture draws the poet's attention to a greater degree than the other two faces no prizes for guessing that face was actually the face of her mother okay her mother's face was an innocent one the face was a sweet one obviously that face on which she was she had concentrated that means the face on which the poets i mean the poet has concentrated actually that face belongs to her mother okay the poet also says that the photograph was taken long before her own birth since then her mother's face has changed uh, course changed in contrast to this the sea which lay along the beach where the photograph was taken had changed to a lesser degree as i told you human life underwent drastic changes in comparison to that in the world of nature we don't find a lot of change okay even the seashore is there even the sea beach is also exactly there but the uh, footsteps can't be seen but once upon a time uh, there was three girls posing in front of the camera and now 30 or 40 or 50 years later they had grown old and obviously the poet's mother had died but if you uh, if you see the world of the nature the seashore the sea beach remains exactly the same so there are a slight change or change to a lesser degree in the world of nature but if we see the change in the life of the human beings it was changed to a greater degree okay that is something very very important it was changed to a greater degree that very sea washed the feet of the poet's mother and her two younger cousins the day the photograph had been taken the poet calls those feet terribly transient since all the girls in that photograph had stopped being so young and had grown up since then obviously 20 or 30 or 40 years later every one of them had grown up even the poet's mother who was a girl of 12 years later she became a housewife and later in due course of time she also died so human life changes with the passage of time and obviously our existence is ephemeral i have already given you the meaning previously when i discussed about it ephemeral means it is transient it is temporary thus the sea here symbolizes eternity against the infinite vastness of which human lives appear even more evanescent in comparison obviously see in comparison with the vastness of nature it seems that our life is so temporary our life is too short too little in comparison with the 
vastness of the nature okay now i am moving on some 20 30 years later she would laugh at the snapshot see betty and dolly she would say and look how they dressed us for the beach i have given in the google form 15 mcq questions related with this particular poem and one question is given related to this particular stanza i don't remember the exactly the question number right now uh, but i do remember that one mcq question has been given related with this four line see uh, every time when our mother used to see this photograph she used to smile a lot and particularly she used to smile at looking at the swimming costumes that they were been told by their family members to wear okay see in these lines the poet stops looking at the photograph and recalls what her mother used to say about the photograph the poet is in sure whether it was 20 years after the photograph was taken or 30 years after it but she remembers her mother telling her to look at how the cousins called betty and dolly looked at that age now obviously it's a journey down the memory lane i told you it's a journey down the memory lane or thinking about the past memories as nostalgia it is like i mean uh, scrounging the old photographs in the photo album is like a nostalgic moment it's like a nostalgia and obviously the poet's mother she used to laugh a lot obviously by looking at the peculiar dresses the swimming costumes that she and her cousins had to wear because their parents had told them because there was a preparation beforehand only we can presume that a photograph will be taken and that was taken actually the poet's mother also asked her to look at how their parents had dressed them for a visit to the beach perhaps the plan to take the photograph had been there all along i told you maybe the plan was there the plan for taking a photograph was there all along okay so that was the reason the photograph was been taken and that was the reason they were been told to wear the swimming costumes now 20 years 30 years later she she used to smile looking at that particular swimming costumes okay that she had to wear along with her two cousins now line number 14 and 15 was her past okay see this line is a continuation of the previous one the sea holiday was her past mine is a laughter both rhyme with the labored ease of loss now obviously the poet's mother used to miss that particular sea holiday and she used to recollect it every time she used to see the photograph now after her death obviously the poet misses her a lot because uh, it's of course at the end of the day it it is her mother and uh, she was her mother and most importantly she misses the laughter of her mother see the photograph was an in road to the past that she had left behind that is the reason i told you it's like a journey down the memory lane on the other hand the poet herself considered the memory of her mother laughing as a relic of the past that she missed every day every day now she is missing her mother's laughter more than her mother so in both the cases the memories of the past made the two women contemplating very important two women means when her mother was alive at that time she used to contemplate she used to think about that particular sea holiday and later after her death the poet she used to contemplate the loss of her dear mother okay and they both feel disappointed as they tried hard to come to terms with what they had lost obviously it has been very difficult obviously 20 30 years later when the poet's mother is to see the photograph it's been very hard for her uh, because she used to think uh, she used to remember everything she used to revive everything but she can't go back to that time zone it is not possible right obviously she can uh, go back to that time zone down the memory lane but in reality it is not possible for her to again go back to that time period right and obviously for the poet it is the laughter when her mother is to be alive and when she used to take out this photograph her mother is to laugh a lot but after her death uh, the most important thing that she is missing right now is uh, her mother's laughter more than anything else and it is not possible to bring back her mother from her graveyard right so the penultimate three lines remember structurally this poem is of three i mean 19 lines okay now she has been dead nearly as many years as that girl lived and of this circumstance there is nothing to say at all it's silent silence i already told you the demise of the poet's mother the dear departed mother it has created a voidness it has created a vacuum all around okay see 
the poet says that her mother has been dead for the past 12 years that is the same number of years that was the age of her mother in the photograph that she had been looking at remember in that particular photograph also uh, what was the age of her mother the age of her mother was 12 years and later remember when her mother became a housewife and when she was alive and when she used to look at the photograph at that time her daughter was exactly of her age has been shown in the photograph that means at that time the poet was of 12 years exactly that was her age in that photograph but by that time she was already a housewife and later after her demise 12 years passed by that was exactly her age in the photograph when that photograph was taken okay if you can remember the timeline it becomes interesting it never becomes complicated remember as i told you at the very beginning of my lecture that this 12 years swings like a pendulum in the first stage the poet's mother was 12 years in the second stage she is she was a housewife she became a housewife 20 30 years later her daughter that is the poet herself she was of 12 years when she used to see the photograph after 20 30 years later and later after some more years pass by she is no more alive and obviously she died 12 years passed by that was exactly her age as been shown in the photograph so if you can remember this timeline it becomes interesting it never becomes complicated so remember that 12 years timeline okay the poet is able to think of her mother's death but she has no words with which to explain how that death has affected her obviously because photograph cherishes i mean we relish many of our past memories it provides us happiness but most important thing that uh, this actually never provides happiness to the poet it is providing the poet sadness okay very much she is uh, i mean she is feeling very sad loss and grief are there obviously because she misses her mother her mother is no longer alive and most importantly she misses the laughter of her mother okay the f- and obviously it is something uh, i mean death of a near and dear one it is something that is very hard to pen down it is very hard to write in either prose or poem and it seems that despite being a poet the poet i mean uh, she was at a loss of words it is very difficult for her to pen down had exact excruciating agonizing uh, painful experience it was very difficult for her to pen down it this excruciatingly agonizing experience it was very difficult to express it so that is the reason it silent silences and the death of her mother has created voidness or vacuum all around see the fact that the death has silenced her mother has also left her speechless ultimately she has nothing much to say tragedy has struck her in such a way that she has become grief stricken and it seems that silence is the best possible answer because it silence silences and remember it's an alliteration silence silences and another important thing it's a personification also because silence has been personified in the above line okay so with that i end my lecture i guess you all enjoyed it i hope you liked it and i guess it is clear to all of you is there any doubt you want to share with me any sort of confusion shomodeep or go uh, any sh- any sort of confusion no, okay fine okay so with that i end my lecture and stay safe everyone and one request before you leave the class google form i will be giving the sharing the link i want maximum students from this class to attempt okay every one of you should attempt you should tell your friends to attempt also it will be a nice practice before the examination 15 mcq questions are given and i am very optimistic you all will be answering it and side by side you will be getting the answers also okay so thank you everyone uh, stay safe and uh, see you all uh, i mean thank you, see sir. You, okay see you all in my next class thank you thank you everyone thank you thank you sir thank you thank you